Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this week's episode, we're taking a day trip from Matsuyama to Ozu, an old castle town with a specially reconstructed hilltop castle. Ozu also has a beautiful old town with many sites harking back to the Edo period and currently appears to be undergoing a bit of a restoration boom. A surprise for us was discovering a hilltop shrine complex which really blew us away. Before we get into it, please do us a favor and give the video a like. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning. I'm feeling so happy and satisfied. Yes, that buffet breakfast we devoured this morning and were so consumed with and enjoyed. Uh, was really really good and that was at your expense because <laughs> we did not share it but we will tomorrow right yeah. it was our first buffet breakfast of the trip though and we usually eat our breakfast at the hotel because we really enjoy the experience just going down being leisurely getting that have as many coffees as I want and get to choose different foods and trying different things uh, it's always very pleasant that's one reason why we like to stay at hotels versus Airbnbs when we're actually on vacation and for our first day here in Matsuyama Yama, we're actually leaving Matsuyama. <laughs> Inside those all wooden interior with brass and bronze handles, yeah. our, our knobs and stuff. <laughs> the controls for the driver were so old school. It was really cool. Uh, I like how these trams have a driver spot at the front and the back. So when they get to the end of the line, they just move to the other side of the train and continue on. And it's really neat. Yeah, and traveling by tram without luggage is a totally different experience. Yeah, totally. Last night was a bit hectic, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, so we're at the JR station here in Matsuyama. We're going to hop on a train for our day trip out of Matsuyama. arrived 40 minutes later after a super scenic train ride mm. we are at Ozu this is a town southwest of Matsuyama and there's limited express trains running here I think every hour yeah. so you can get here very easily uh, it's on the way to another destination where it seemed like most people were headed when we got off the train we seemed like we were alone and this was one of the reasons why I wanted to come here on our very first day official day of our touring vacation because I was yearning for something smaller quieter more country feeling and I think we have found it here in this Ozu. Definitely hits the bill and it's beautiful because it's surrounded by mountains can you smell mm. the fresh air yeah it's really re rejuvenating me so this is an old castle town this emerged during the Edo period and uh, was very prosperous yeah it was actually known for its wax and its silk industry and it brought a lot of money in so I think that we're gonna see remnants of that evidence all around the town yeah there's three main things to come here to check out there's the castle there is the old town which is supposed to have some good representations of Edo period and also Meiji period and also there's a villa that was built by a very prosperous merchant who made his money selling wax and that's what we came here to check out so we're right beside the castle basically we're on the other side of the river there's a beautiful river that runs through the town and it separates the train station that we got off from with all the sites all the sites the castle the old town the villa are on the other side of the river so we have to go find the bridge get onto the other side and start exploring
in the tourist office, the guy working there was super friendly. He was. Eh? He had good English. Yeah, because he's been, English well. He did speak English very well. A little bit better than you. <laughs> and <laughs> and he had been to Canada, right? He had yeah. visited British Columbia, Vancouver, and was really happy to talk to us about it. Uh, but what's interesting is that they recommend a path towards the main sites here, which make you miss this area. And I only saw this area because I noticed on one of their maps on their billboards, they pointed this out as a scenic photo spot. Spot. It was all in Japanese. I couldn't read it or understand it, but I brought us here. Yeah, you can glad you did. Yeah, it's this cute little parkette uh, overlooking the castle, or the castle's overlooking this parkette because it's up on the hill. And we're kind of down in what maybe is floodplains because there's these embankments with stairs built into them that make me think that that is an emergency measure against flooding. I guess we're pretty close to the ocean or the sea here, so maybe in the worst conditions it will come upstream. Yeah. But Nice little spot for a pitcher. You know what? If I get thirsty, I know what I'm going to do. What's that? I'm going to stick my head in that big bird over there <laughs> and get something to drink out of his head. Big. Let's go over and take a look at what you're talking about. Is this what you're talking about? Yes. Do you see another big bird here with a beak inviting you to drink from his head? Uh, uh, uh no. <laughs> it's an interesting little parquet, eh? There's little animal statues around it. Um, and this thing, which is a pelican, it looks like, with a fountain built into it. Whoa! Whoa! That could have been very, very bad. No kidding. All right, let's head to the castle. Our first stop exploring Ozu is Ozu Castle. And this is a magnificent castle up on a hill. I love hilltop castles. I love that we have this place practically to ourselves. Mm. Hence our loud voices. Yes. <laughs> That's always a bonus, isn't it? This is an amazing castle. There's a few notable things about this castle. The first is that it has two turrets. Most castles only have one turret, but this one has two. And the second really amazing thing about this castle is that this is obviously a reconstruction. Uh, this castle dates back to the 1300s and has been destroyed over the years and rebuilt. No, a castle in Japan yeah. that's been destroyed by fires, lightning, and man-made disasters? Yes, no. it, is, it has been known to happen. <laughs> And it happened to this one. Uh, and this one was also destroyed during the Meiji Restoration when they were tearing down a lot of the old Edo stuff. But they've been rebuilding it. So they started in the 1950s reconstructing this castle. It was finally finished in 2004. And the reason why it took so long is because unlike a lot of other reconstructions, this one didn't use concrete. They rebuilt it in the old style with wood and paper and it makes the interior look authentic like the exterior. You know, a lot of castles you'll visit, the exterior looks like old. it used to, yeah. but the interior looks like a modern building. And that's because they're all built with, with concrete. Uh, but this one is really quite striking inside and out. I just love that it's so high, situated so high and the climb up was nice and the views from up here is beautiful. Mm. Yeah, that's probably not by mistake. No. They build castles so that they can defend them. And this one was built up on the hill and one side of the castle has the river going by it. So it had like a natural moat. And yeah, I would not want to have to try and take this castle. That would have been a bit of a job. I would not have liked to have been a part of building this castle. That would have been a, quite a job according to all the dioramas mm. downstairs. Yeah, it would have been a lot of work. But yeah, it's amazing. It has a lot of history here. And this became quite a prominent place during the Edo period. Um, lots of important people ended up living here in the castle. So where are we sitting now in the castle? So we're at the very top of the main tower. Uh, the last two staircases, did you notice how steep they were? Yes. They're almost basically just like ladders going straight up. My legs are screaming on the way up. Were they? Yeah. Uh, so the first, few, the first few flights of stairs are like normal stairs, yeah. but then I guess because the floors get a lot smaller um, in terms of surface area, yeah. they had to really compact the stairs 
going up. So that they're basically they're basically ladders. So right now, all that's up here is a room that's I don't know, 10 meters by 10 no, meters. No, maybe. 20 to 25 by 20 to 25. Yeah, so it's still pretty small mm -hmm. and we have a friend up here. We do. Yeah, he's a fish-like form mm. and I always see this um, form above all the castles and I just found out that there's usually two of them and they sit on either side of the roof mm -hmm. and what their purpose is is get this. What? To guard against fire and lightning. Yes, <laughs> they're protectors of the castle. Um, I forget what they're mythical creatures. Yeah. They kind of look like dolphins mm -hmm. or some kind of fish. Yeah. Um, but we've said that before and we've been corrected on our channel in the past. Um, but There's yeah. There's a sign. Yeah, this one has actual information. It has information. Yeah. But fires and lightning. Hmm. Mm. Every castle we've ever come across has been destroyed by fire and lightning at one point. Yeah, I mean these things are just tinder boxes yeah. though, aren't they? It's all wooden construction, paper, so just the, the f one small flame gone awry and the whole thing will go up. I can totally see how that would have happened. And then if lightning hits it, I mean you can't even control that. Back in the days, they didn't know anything about lightning rods. Uh, so. They're just sitting ducks, especially up on a hill like this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I love Japanese castles. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. They're, they're so visually pleasing they outside. Are. Yeah. Let's continue our little tour of this castle before we head down to the old town. Here on the second floor of the main tower, you can see a little exhibit of pictures and it's showing you viewpoints in the olden days and today, like back in the 40s or earlier and then after the reconstruction. So you can get a sense of what it used to look like before they decided to rebuild the castle in the 1950s. And some of them have really old pictures uh, and it's amazing to see how the things have changed since then. So you get a really good view of the ruined castle times and what rebuilding it has done for the area around it today. The last spot in the castle that we're checking out before we leave is the turret. So you have good access to the entire castle, yeah. right? You, I'm better to access yeah, to. Yeah, basically, it's clear that they don't get a ton of tourists coming through that they have to really control everything yet. Uh, so you can go up to the main tower like you saw us earlier and just you know take your time and get into every nook and cranny and then you can also go up the turret so there's one of the turrets here um, I'm not sure if you can get up the second one but definitely one of them that we're sitting in you can go up it and explore it as well and this is showing off a feature I think you have a factoid about I do most of the castles we find in Japan are kind of dark inside but this one's very light and airy. That's because there have been an uncharacteristically large numbers of windows put into this castle. Mm, it definitely makes a difference because yeah, I didn't really think about it no. until you mentioned it. Yeah. But come, but now that I am, <laughs> when I when we do go into castles, they are very yeah, dark. Dark and kind of closed in. But yeah. this one has a very bright and like ooh, spacious feeling. Yeah, I wonder what that did for their defenses. Mm. I wonder if they didn't feel like they were going to be under attack too much or what because it makes it a little bit more open yeah more vulnerable more vulnerable yeah and also most of the Japanese uh, castles they only have three floors mm. and this one has four floors mm. so I think what I think is that the architect they found to build this castle was a bit of a rogue maybe yeah what now that you mentioned that interesting thing that I read is that one of the people that did live here mm -hmm. that I was saying a lot of important people over the years have actually lived in this castle as they called this home one of them was a castle builder ah. uh, so <laughs> 
<laughs> I, he came in here and probably designed a bunch of other castles around that no longer exist. Mm. All right, let's pack up here and head out for our second destination. I think we said we want to do the old town. We do. But lunch is calling. Mm -hmm. We have to go find some food. We are hungry. So lunch plans took an unexpected yeah. turn. I had visions of cutesy cafe, traditional Japanese food, relaxing time. Where are we? <laughs> We're at Family Mart. So the restaurants here seem to be closed either because it's past two and maybe they close between lunch and dinner, which would make sense at a small place like this, or uh, some places just close on Mondays and today's Monday. so. We were having a hard time finding a restaurant. I think we got rejected from three places. Little old ladies ran out of their shop and said, no, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, we actually went into one and inside was completely dark. It was a sushi restaurant. There was an old dude behind the counter and there was an old lady out like in front of the counter and they were just kind of like chilling probably until they saw this white face pop in and then they both looked kind of concerned. And then we tried to converse, but they just like, no big language barrier there and we just realized they're closed so we've moved on to family mart um, family mart if you don't know is a convenience store that has a lot of food items actually so you can get some pretty quality good stuff at the family mart or any convenience store here in japan and it's usually pretty good like if you're from north america and you haven't experienced this and all you have to base your experience on is north american convenience stores uh, you'd be shocked to find that we're eating here, but it's pretty pretty good actually. So I am going to have carbonara. Yeah, you what can, are you going to have? I'm having some kind of cheese gratin thing. I'm not quite sure. I just saw cheese and I was like, that looks pretty good. Uh, and they have microwaves here, so they'll nuke the food for you, heat it up. And they, of course, they have all the drinks you could want. Everything, everything's here. And there's a seating area. There's a seating area here that we're sitting in. I actually got a salad, which looks pretty legit with egg and tuna and corn and stuff. So let's break into our food here and see how it is. Mmm. That is actually surprisingly very good. The top is super creamy and cheesy on a bed of rice. And when I was saying that to Nicole, she was like, Doria! And if you're not sure what that means, I'll link a video up here where we discovered Doria for the first time. But it's just this kind of cuisine, kind of like a casserole. And this is kind of exactly what this is. I don't think there's any protein in there though. I think it's just cheese, cream sauce, and rice. But it is so good. It's very warm and it's a little bit chilly out. And uh, just comfort food. It's kind of what I felt like. And I'm going to wash it down with a... Another winter Sapporo. We don't get these back at home. They don't import these into Canada, maybe North America. Just the normal Sapporo, which is actually brewed outside Toronto. Ah, tastes like beer to me. Very good. So we're gonna chow down on our meals here. Actually, we should check in with Nicole and see how her carbonara is. How is your carbonara? My carbonara is a lot better than it looked. Yeah, you were a bit concerned. I, I saw was. the look on your face and we're like, let's go eat at Family Mart. And then when you saw the options, it's just your face just kind of went down <laughs> several levels. Uh, but now that you were eating and got food in you, I can see it's perked up again. So it's actually not bad? It's not bad, but there's a disclaimer. I happen to love carbonara. Mm. So it's got to be really, really terrible for me to turn my nose up at it. <laughs> so what this carbonara has going for it is that I didn't think it didn't look like it had enough sauce when I mm. first looked. It looked really dry, mm -hmm. but when he nuked it, all the sauce did melt, and there is actually enough sauce to cover the spaghetti. But in terms of taste, it's very, very, very mild. Mm. I'm sure it's all chemicals, and there's no um, parmesan or any of the good. There's definitely no. You egg mean there's here. just craft parmesan? There's not. I don't think it's even craft parmesan. Oh really? And there's very, very little bacon, mm. but. It's actually not bad. I would, in terms of um, how to rate it, I would give it a solid 
5.5 really? or 6. Wow. Considering it was only 400 yen, I mean, come on, like, yeah. what can you expect? I mean, that's the advantage of having to pop into a convenience store for a lunch or, or a dinner. We've done that in the past. Is it's cheap yeah. and it's fast. So yeah. we're not going to spend an hour in here eating. We're going to probably half an hour in and out and then we'll be on to our next spot. So kind of worked out because we're short on time this afternoon. Yeah, in a pinch, it's it was super, like you said, convenient and mm. also like the options were, were really good yeah, considering you... like we're in a convenience yeah. store, we're in the middle, kind of, we're in a really, really small town. Mm -hmm. There was quite a lot of things to choose from. Yeah. So if you see a convenience store, rest assured, you will not die of starvation. Yeah. And to go with my Doria, my family mark Doria, decided to get a little salad. It's a pretty decent salad. It's a, it's a shredded cabbage salad. There's a, a little bit of egg, a little bit of tuna, so that's my protein for this meal. Some corn and um, some lettuce. And I don't see any salad dressing, so it might be a little bit bland, but we'll see. We'll get into it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do the salad without salad dressing. I went up to try and ask them, is there salad dressing somewhere? And I was picking up some sauces off the counter and asking them, is this good for this? And he was pointing to, no, it's for the fried food or the odin. But then he pointed to their their case and they have salad dressing. So I picked one. Uh, I didn't even pay attention to what it was. I just looked at the picture yeah. like that looks creamy and that should go well with this uh, shredded cabbage. And it ends up that this is 25 cents for a little packet of salad dressing. And they have a whole bunch that I just missed. It was right above the salads. I don't know how I missed it, but uh, this changes the game. <laughs> I can enjoy my salad now. So I guess you liked your meal, eh? What gave it away? The fact that I licked the plastic container? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I looked over and you were like trying to wring out that plastic container for every last <laughs> drop of sauce. Okay. First of all, I was super, super desperate by the time I cracked open that pasta. So given that I was super desperate, this meal was like a five-star meal. Mm. It was heavenly and it was delicious. And I've been in positions where I've been very, very hungry and very, very desperate. And what was presented me presented to me had been like, I'll just stay hungry. But this time, nope, this was like jackpot. Mm. I was very satisfied with my meal. That was really good. Um, can't I would. This is a total doable option yeah. if you're in a pinch. Yeah, this is again, not a everyday meal. Probably shouldn't be a once every so often meal. Just mm. say once in a blue moon meal or once when you're desperate meal, but mm -hmm. it did hit the spot. The, the second bonus of this meal is that you're getting some power for your phone. You can, at the counter here, the little table they have set up, they have plugs. So you can just plug in and charge your devices. So I got a bit of power and you got a bit of power. Yeah. No complaining about our drinks though. Yeah, you love that tea. Because so, they're jasmine tea. It's not, it's not Family Mart um, brand, but Family Mart seems to be like the only uh, convenience store that carries this brand and they heat it up. They, put, they always put it in the hot section. So mm. whenever I need a little pick-me-up that's warm, especially when it's cold, it's my go-to. They got your back. Mm. Well, that's lunch today. That's a wrap. Yeah, time to get to our second destination. absolutely love small towns and this is why. We've been walking from Family Mart to our next destination which is the villa we mentioned earlier and we're walking through the old town. We're now in the old town proper and the architecture is really amazing and demonstrates that but what Nicole's talking about is we came across this little stand and the man emptying his car right beside it and he's selling dried out mushrooms and what I think are mandarin oranges. Nicole really likes dried mushrooms so we decided to stop and get a bag and he gave us each 
one of these tangerines. As a present. Yeah, as a present to try. And uh, he also gave Nicole a grasshopper made out of grass. Pretty amazing uh, art artistry to be able to do that with grass. So let's try these mandarin oranges, tangerines. Not quite sure. Mmm. It's not the tangerine or mandarin flavor I'm familiar with. It's very close, but it's a little bit milder than that. Very, very juicy. Very good. Those are 300 yen, but I don't think we could wrangle those home with us. And the man working at the little stall here, super friendly. Nicole walked up to him, was like, Konnichiwa. And then he responded, Konnichiwa. And then he saw me and he said, hello. And I responded, Konnichiwa. And it's just really friendly guy. We were just hanging here looking at his stuff. And then he gave us these two oranges. And um, as we were about to walk away, he handed us one of his grasshoppers. And just really smiley and friendly. And that's what you find in these small towns, I find anyways, are people who maybe don't see as many foreign tourists as, as you would see definitely in Tokyo or Kyoto. So they're a little bit maybe curious and willi willing or wanting to interact with you a little bit. Uh, always have great experiences in these small towns. Coming to see the castle at Ozu was our number one priority. Mm. But when we got to the visitor center, the lovely man behind the counter was very insistent that <laughs> this is where we should come and visit. And we said, okay, but we still weren't 100% sure. Mm. But when we got to the castle, we found that they had a combo ticket. And then we thought, okay, why not? And the man was right. He knew what he was talking about and he earned his place behind the counter. <laughs> this is Garyu Sanzo and this is a villa. This was the private re residence of a pretty well-to-do man who was born here in Uso and had gone to Kobe to do his business and wanted to come back to retire. And when he came back to retire, he built this villa to retire to. Yeah. And I can't imagine living my last days out here. Well, it's it was, incredible. It was, it was his dream and it took 10 years to build this villa. He hired special um, carpenters and craftsmen from Kyoto wow. to come and put in the details and the architect is a really notable um, person at that time. Behind the thatched roof building where we started the tour is a beautiful Japanese garden. I love how the building opens up giving the inhabitant tranquil views out over this amazing space. The meandering path through the garden is laid primarily with a series of stepping stones and rock and keeps the visitor off the numerous species of beautiful moss found throughout the garden. The garden is dotted with ornamental pieces such as stone lanterns, basins which I think are for purification and several carvings of various animals. Making our way along the path, we find an old tiled roof building, originally built as a small bathhouse. What an amazing place to either wake up the body for the day or soothe away a long day with a soak and a view. We also come across a cave, which was used to store and keep goods cold before the luxury of refrigerators. The path ends at one of the property's highlights, a small building built out over the cliff giving fantastic views of the gorge beside which this property was built.
In fact, the location chosen to build this villa is as special as the villa itself. Wow, that villa is incredible. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Mm, I can't imagine retiring there, living my last days in this amazing spot right on the river. How did he make his money again? He made wax, he produced wax, mm. but his wax was actually very famous. It was known to be such high quality and he didn't just sell it to Japan, he exported it as well. And his wax was in such demand that Parisian uh, makeup companies bought mm. it. So back in the day, makeup was very expensive. Rouge and um, lis lipstick was mm -hmm. very expensive and was considered a luxury product. And mm. that's what he sold his wax to. Right, wow, that's crazy. No wonder he had so much money. <laughs> He was doing well. Yeah, he was doing well. And he, was, he lived in Kobe during the time. Wow. So he was born here and moved to Kobe, was able to set up that business and run it very successfully yes. by the sounds of things. And then really wanted to retire back in his hometown. Yeah. And that's why he had this place commissioned. Uh, and he couldn't have found a better spot. No. Like the view from here is incredible. Well, it took 10 years, I think, yes. to build it. Uh, there was one master builder who was overseeing the whole project. And didn't you say that there were some brought from Kyoto? Kyoto, yes. To come and help him finish it and work on some of the details. Wow, amazing. So you can get a combined ticket for this and the castle. It was 800 yen. Incredibly reasonable. Yeah, for both. And this one here it has quite a, a, a large grounds to explore. So there's the main house. Then there's all the gardens you can walk around. And then they had an, a lookout, basically. Yeah. And that is where you can stand and get this amazing view over the river. Um, I was a bit sketched out standing there. Yeah, looking down it was a bit like heart dropping. Yeah, especially when you kind of look at the wood and you're basically, that's all a wooden structure on the edge of the cliff, but it held, <laughs> we were still alive. <laughs> and it was worth the view. It was. The sun was just like hitting the gorge on the other side yeah. just perfectly. So we're done the two main attractions here in Ozu, uh, the castle and this villa. Oh, you know what? I what? For we forgot to share our celebrity status for a brief moment. <laughs> Ozu is still such a small town. Then again, we were mentioning that um, they don't get many foreign tourists. Or we don't think anyways. Well, we don't think, but I'm pretty sure they don't. And uh, we walked past a school group. We got the cheers, we got the hellos, we disrupted the poor teacher's entire <laughs> plan because everybody was just like gopping at us, yeah. but in a very polite and a curious way. Yeah, they just really wanted nice. to say hello. Yeah, it was like really sweet and they were teenagers and they didn't have any like attitude or angst. It was mm. just, just really sweet. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So we're done the two main attractions for this little town. Uh, we're going to go wander around the old town now and look at some of the history there dating back to the Edo period. So you're supposed to be able to get some glimpses of Edo period and Meiji period. Let's go. All right, guys, we have a dilemma. We have about 45 minutes left of sunlight and we have the town to walk around and explore or we have the shrine up all these stairs to go up and explore. It's a tough call. I know what we should do. What's that? Up the hill! All right, let's go up the hill. But before we do, go stand over there. Okay. You are standing at the base of a huge lantern. I've never seen that before. No, it looks like it came out of a Ghibli movie. And so does that lantern right beside you. Mm, now we know where he gets his inspirations from. I'm at the top of the stairs. I just passed under this torii. Unfortunately, there's more stairs. Passing through various levels of protection. The torii, these foo dogs here on either side of the top of these steps. I hope those are food dogs. And if I was in China, I would totally say those are food dogs. I'm not sure if they are the exact same thing here in Japan, but I feel pretty well guarded having gone through those two gates, so to speak. Our last few stairs here. 
spot. Oh wow. I think we made the right decision and all those steps were well worth it. It's quite striking up here. It is striking. I was going to say that all those steps looked a lot more intimidating than it actually was. Mm. We got up here in no time. Yes, although I was huffing and puffing by the end of it. <laughs> but I was rewarded with this amazing open space up here with this main shrine behind us and several littler shrines sort of dotting around. Statues, lan stone lanterns, really amazing up here. It's very pretty. I mm. was, we were noting that it seems like the shrine is kind of divided into two. There's very old and very new. So it seems like they had some very like for example they had a very very old shrine and they might have gotten some money to have a new shrine built so mm. instead of like either repairing the old shrine or thank goodness tear not tearing down the old shrine they just built a new shrine and just kind of completely abandoned the old shrine they just kind of wrapped it in some green netting and just mm. let it sit there and then for the temple or the administrative building it's also they have a the new old building. wing yeah the old wing and the new wing and the old wing has just kind of been left it looks like Abandoned. yeah from the outside yeah and then they're just like eh, we're just going to not <laughs> not we don't have to do anything to the old building we'll just move ourselves to the <laughs> to the new, new building. building yeah it does kind of look like that <laughs> i'm wondering if they put the green netting on the older shrine just to protect it for yes. now maybe they will restore I it i hope so because yeah. it's extraordinarily beautiful mm. so this is ozu shrine this is the city shrine and unfortunately we don't know too much about it other than it's on the top of this hill there's many steps to get up to it and it's very picturesque up here we do know something about the shrine and i think people in japan may know more about mm. it because this shrine is actually used as a filming location to a popular japanese drama mm. Mm, yes, the U Ozu itself, there's a couple locations around town that they've used for this particular drama and they have a picture showing the front of this shrine where we're standing as being a, a shot location where somebody gives somebody a handkerchief. <laughs> I, I don't know. Hey, if you know, send a comment below and let us know. Yeah, now we're very curious. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look around the shrine before we head down and decide if it's time to go home or we have some time left to explore the little town. Five o'clock bell just started while we were up here. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but it's a very different tune than what we were hearing in Tokyo. So the emergency broadcast system works perfectly fine right now in Ozu. If you don't know what I mean by that, check out this video where I explained it back in Tokyo. On the way back to the train station from Ozu Shrine, we have been walking through the old town and it is such a cool place. Lots of glimpses of the past. It's like walking through a life-size museum, mm. like an open air museum, except some of the houses are still operational and they have some mod modernities. Some like modern touches. Yeah, yeah, like air conditioning, electricity. Mm. And what also I also think is cool is that um, 
it seems like they're realizing how special these houses are mm -hmm. because there's quite a few of them that have been um, let fall to major dilapidation mm. but it seems like a lot of them are starting to get major renovations mm -hmm. and they're renovating them in a way that it's bringing the old back to yeah, new. It's maintaining that Edo's feel exactly. on the houses, the dark wood and all of that. Yeah, they're not just um, they're just not renovating and putting plaster or just covering. They are actually bringing it the old mm -hmm. back to they bring the past back to the present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really amazing. It's good that they're doing that. It seems like this town, and we'll speak about this in a bit, has put a lot of energy into getting ready or for tourism. So it's really good to see. So we're gonna walk back to the train station here along one of the more scenic roads, I think, yeah. up here called according to the map. And uh, let's see what we find down here. Another thing that I'm really enjoying about the old town is interacting with the locals. There's a lot of people out for their evening strolls right now. And and they're very very friendly some of them are saying hi to us konnichiwa or we're saying it to them and they're responding with big smiles and that really brings this area to life somehow makes it very inviting We've just been on our way back to the station and stumbled upon this little shop which somehow beckoned us in as we walked through the traditional curtains across the entry, we saw that this is a soy sauce producer. And of course, we had to pick up a few bottles to bring back home with us. Guys, check out this station. I love small town stations. They have a certain charm and calm which allows for a quiet moment while waiting for the train. As compared to the large city stations which are a constant hustle and bustle. What a fantastic day it's been. The train trip back to home base from a day trip is always a welcome repose for me. A moment to reflect on the new memories we just created exploring somewhere new or discovering a new food or meeting someone along the way. A chance to recharge for the next adventure. Thanks so much for watching the video. We hope you were able to introduce some new sites to you as we explored Ozu together. If you enjoyed the video, please let us know by clicking the like button down below. Next up, we're going to be exploring the top sites in Matsuyama. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. We'll see you next week.